and welcome to the Attacking the Attacker DVD. This tutorial we're going to be focusing on um, cleansing you of your brainwashing that you might have got from self-defence classes, from traditional martial arts training and from the modern media's portrayal of what violence looks like. Typically what's portrayed and what's trained is a model of violence that is a, a two-way street, a tit-for-tat sort of situation. You can compare this to sportive scenarios like boxing where you get a go and then I get a go and then you get a go and then I get a go or you know like in martial arts films where it's block, counter strike, block, counter strike and it's bang, 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 bang and that kind of a rhythm. Um, you'll see that being portrayed often uh, or some variation of that model of reality, that map of reality which A doesn't match up to the reality as you know the map is not the territory in the real world, anybody who's been in a lot of fights or who's watched a lot of fights will tell you that typically when you've got two people fighting, you'll have one person delivering the violence and the other person receiving it. And in terms of your self-protection training, we want to train you to be that person who is delivering the violence. We want to train you to attack the attacker. We don't need to think in terms of defence. We can actually remove defence from the equation because attack is the best form of defence. And the first section that we're going to look at today I'm going to be showing you exactly how that works. Um, one of the first things that we should cover is uh, the psychology of um, this whole uh, tutorial. The psychological elements that you need to understand is one, we start by accessing a combative state first. That means you always start with violent intent. When I'm showing you the drills today and I'm showing you the patterns, yes, they give you the chance to train your physical techniques, to train your physiology, your muscles, your, your, your body, but primarily they're there to train you in the psychological responses that you want. Somebody attacks you, you counter-attack, whether that's a physical attack or a psychological attack, you seek to counter-attack. It's tactically the best form of defense. So step number one in terms of the psychology is access a combative state first and foremost. Step number two is if it is um, a, an attack that has a verbal element to it first, then you need to learn to play that game. You need to be a good player of that game. So you need to look to be attacking that person psychologically as well. Use deception. Use dissuasion. Use offensive psychology. We've got a course um, called Offensive Psychology, which is a CD course, which deals with this kind of thing. Uh, the second element to that is to actually set the person up, where you actually seek to induce a soft state in them. You want to be hitting that person where they're not ready. You want to hit them when they're actually in a soft state. And you need to study ways of switching them off, calming them down, making them think that they've won that, that fight to get them into a more relaxed state where they feel dominant so that you can then counterattack in the softest part and really, really do damage. The final part of the psychology of attacking the attacker, and this will all be dealt with in the CD that goes with this DVD course, the, CD, the NLP for Combative CD course, which is just called Attacking the Attacker, where we in integrate NLP and other psychology techniques that allow you to put these um, concepts and principles and drills into your head, um, is this element of having a more of a thuggish mindset. Now in America, when you say uh, thug, that has a gangster rap overtones, that's not what we're talking about here. In the UK, when we say thug, we mean somebody who's at the opposite end of the skilled technical martial artist who has a thousand and one different techniques. We're talking about somebody who's rough untrained, they have one or two, maybe three techniques that they know really, really well that they deliver with maximum force, maximum aggression. That's the way you want to train your psychology to be dealing with this issue when you're attacking the attacker. You need to think like a thug, you need to start thinking like a criminal, and you need to meet in this uh, middle ground between the two extremes. Thank you. So this concept of attacking uh, being the best form of defense, um, when you're looking at attack being the best form of defense, this is something that's quite hard to convey to people who've never been in a fight themselves and they don't have much experience even of combat sports because on paper, when you're used to looking at footage of people showing fight techniques or reading books showing fight techniques, it just doesn't make sense. Instinctively inside your head, it won't make sense. So yeah, there has to be an element of trust here, but also, you have to drill it and experience it for yourself. And I'm going to show you uh, later on some drills that will allow you to do this, that will allow you to experience it for yourself. This is why when people um, ask me for techniques, I think what they're looking for is a certain sort of, it's, a, it's almost like a kind of a mental nourishment they're looking for. They want more techniques 
more concepts, more things to deal with with different um, problems. You know, so if you just turn Facebook for a second, Peter, if they say to me how to deal with a, a straight right punch. Now, I can invent techniques all day for dealing with that. You know, are we gonna go, are we gonna walk inside? Are we gonna walk to the outside with it? Are we only gonna use the left hand? Are we gonna use both hands? Are we gonna use elbows? You know, uh, if you throw it again, I'm gonna try and block it with, you know, assume that I haven't had time and try and block it with my shoulder. Am I gonna try and, you know, use my head? What am I gonna try and do with it? There's loads of different things that you could do. But fundamentally, the best thing that's gonna stop that is for me to think in terms of a counter-strike. Now, the first DVD in this series, we looked at the GCR, the Generic Combative Response, where I just go, oh shit, bang, fire in, and fire into his head, fire into his face. And you need to understand that by stepping into his space. If you just put your arms by his sides for a second. By stepping into Peter's face and smothering him, by stressing him, by moving forward, he's got room here to punch me, to kick me, to strike me. If I start moving forward, I take that. The thing is, if you don't take the head when you move forward, as we train to do with the GCR, you end up in a grappling match, where taking the head often will stop that. Because if I'm here and we start to grapple, all I've got to do is just keep, keep pushing that head offline. We've covered this in the Beta 8 series, um, so you're already familiar with that as a concept. But what I really want you to understand is this thing of, you know, you're not going to be able to remember that many different techniques in a fight. So we could, if you throw that right punch again, we could be looking at, you know, a, a half a pack sow with maybe like a silat style cover there and I'm coming in here. And, you know, we could look at techniques like that and we could do this all day, you know, trying to work out different fancy ways of doing it. But you're not, A, you're not going to remember it and B, what's the point when I can just show you, bang, you just come inside, crash through, crash inside the guy and affect his body, get inside of his face and attack him. So rather than, if you throw again, this kind of thing where I've, I've, I've deflected with you know, something a little bit fancy, I've deflected, look at me, I'm right the way off balance. Now I've got to come back to him. Without him moving, without him doing anything, it's a lot less likely, isn't it? You know, that we're moving now into a tit for tat scenario. If he throws a punch, and then after that punch, I throw another punch, he could move, he could defend himself, and then we're going one and two and three, and then it starts to look like a film fight scene, where you go know, one and then two and then three, and it's, it looks good and it's nice to watch, but for when you're looking to just terminate a fight as quickly as possible, you actually want to stop them before they take off. If you imagine, uh, say if you use a military style analogy, a, a plane that's going to bomb you, you can wait until it's up in the sky and then try and shoot it out the sky, or you can stop it before it takes off. So with this guy, I need to stop him before he takes off. So ideally, you've seen it a thousand times, but it bears repeating, I should be deciding to set him up and then deliver a preemptive strike. That would be truly stopping him before he's taken off. But even monkeys fall out of trees. So if he's gone for me and I've been shocked by it, then this is where this starts coming to a turn. I was expecting that. I was a bit of a... It's harder when you've been training for a while not to, uh, to come out with these kinds of, these kinds of attacks. Um, and you know, it, nothing's perfect. You know, you might, you might get hit, but for my money and based on my experience, I'm better off maybe even taking one on the way in here and you know, just like things not working out quite so well, but I'm inside the space where I want to be and he's not where he wants to be. Whereas if, if he throws again, I'm going back and try and defend and then counter, I'm just giving him the opportunity to go again. So attack is the best form of defense. And you could even, you could even uh, take it to the nth degree and say, look, if you get really, really good with this, it doesn't matter what attack he throws, if your GCR, if you're, if you're prepared and your, your GCR training is good enough, you should be able to stop any attack he goes for. As long as you're, as long as you're preempting well enough. If he starts, if, uh, if, Peter, if Peter's got a fence up and I start from here, and every single move I go for, he's going for my head and going for a GCR. Does it matter if I go for a punch? It's all right. Or if I go for a kick, Brian, same thing, same deal. He's taking my script and changing it. Or even if I try and grapple him, Brian, he's going for my head. So he's immediately, if I, if I go to shoot, he's immediately stopping the, the, the takedown, isn't he? Because say, if, say if, I'm, if I'm a good grappler and he grabs my head as I'm going down here, if he just follows my head on the way down, still in control you know 
when you look at a different martial arts technique, somebody somebody messaged me the other day and said, can you teach me how to deal with um, a double leg takedown and a ground and pound? And I'm like, why are you coming to me for that? Go to the experts. How do the MMA instructors teach you to deal with that? Like that, grab the head, stop the head down. Look at the guys in the cage. What do they do when they're going for a double leg? Stop the head down, and then they start stepping out. Well, they sometimes now they even turn away and step, and then turn back. The, you know, the, the greatest anti-grappling uh, system in the world is grappling. Nobody knows how to deal with a grappler better than a grappler. Nobody knows how to deal with a boxer better than a boxer. But I digress. So, attack is the best form of defense. This, say this guy's a skilled martial artist, there's loads of different things that he can do. Yes, on paper, that's correct, if I give him the chance. If I give him the chance to get going, and he can get to work on me, then I'm in trouble, then I'm defending. So what we're looking at here is using that psychology, using that mindset, using that GCR, stepping in and just attacking the attacker before he gets going. Thank you. So now taking this into more physical techniques, you've got to understand the uh, principles first before we get into the techniques. There are two things you can do when attacking the attacker. That doesn't mean that no matter what, I'm going to fire into him. That's not an intelligent response. We're looking for intelligent self-protection solutions. We're asking a question which we're going to come up with a solution for. What should we do when somebody attacks us? You want to be thinking in terms of attack but that doesn't necessarily mean you're always just going to fire in, you know, berserker style, head down, firing away. That's not intelligent. You've got to look at the scenario. Is this like a verbal attack, a, a, a psychological attack, an ego to ego thing where we're shoving each other and going, yeah, yeah, and doing all that? That's different to if there's a knife involved. That's different to if he ambushes me, and the first thing I know is when he punches me in the back of the head, and then I go, shit, I'm in a fight. So what have I done first? I've gone, ugh, now I need to think in terms of attacking. There's two things you can do when you're attacking. We covered this on the beta 8 syllabus. You either fight for space or you fight the opponent. So if he bangs me in the back of the head, boom, and I'm like, fucking hell, I need to decide what to do. I don't always, I'm still thinking offensively, but the most intelligent thing for me to do might not be to turn around and start trying to fire in here when he's actually got the drop on me. So what you can actually do is, there's many names for it, tactical retreat is usually how it's described, but you need to fight for space. I'm not in a good position. I need, to, I need to get away, I need to go for space. So part of this attacking the attacker, part of that strategy might look, if you go for that punch again, like this, oh fuck, which looks like very, very defensive. But I need to weather that initial storm. And then having weathered that initial storm and gone, I'm, oh, I'm in a fight, then we start looking at coming back. So people take this thing of like uh, offensive pressure, aggressive strategy. The one I hear a lot, which, which kind of annoys me a little bit because it's become like just something for people to mindlessly say is forward drive. Okay, let's, let's look at the footwork for a second here. If you think of attacking the attacker, you would think I'm always going to be advocating moving forward with footwork in a straight line towards my attacker along tracks like that. In the real world, that just isn't practical. By the way, I don't teach stances um, so much and movements and stuff like that, but if what you're doing is much far away from this, which is, you know, the position people adopt when they're going to hit a baseball, which is the position they adopt when they're playing tennis, it's the position they adopt when they're boxing. If yours looks like if all your weight's on your back foot or you're in some deep karate stance, then you've been over martial artsified. You base you basically need to find an ergonomically efficient stance that allows you to improvise, that allows you to change direction quickly. So forward drive, uh, constant offensive pressure, aggressive footwork, might, on its most simplest, be straightforward, but it's more likely to be straight and curving around. Because the, the reason for that is simple. If you just stick your hands like that for a second, I know this looks dumb. But this is where Peter is dangerous to me. From here, he can punch me, he can drop his elbows on me, he can drop knees on me. Robot where he's style. Yeah, what the one with his 80s robot style. Where he's less dangerous is if I can get round to here, if I can get round to his side. If you just face the camera for a second for me. So all here is dangerous. Headbots, bites, punches, knees, kicks, all of that is here. If I can get from here round to the side, like this, 
then I've got a better chance of moving. I'm also forcing him to move. So generally speaking, yes, you want to move forward. Yes, your footwork should be forward moving, but a more intelligent option than just going straight, which is, if you turn to face me, if I just go straight, eventually we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna get up into here. We're gonna get into a grappling range if I just go straight. So the more intelligent response is gonna be to use my hands to attack him, which we'll, we'll get into in a second, very, very quickly to stress him, but as I'm stressing him, to be turning and moving. It also gives him more of a sense of, basically with this, with this whole series, you know, the MPOD series, you wanna, uh, your objective is to make the person feel like a maelstrom of violence has been opened up on them, like they're in the middle of a frenzied assault. The type of thing that makes them wanna cover up, that makes them feel like flinching. So you really, really wanna stress that person out. So your footwork, yes, will be straight. At times, it's also gonna be curved, and at times, you might have to move backwards. We're gonna look at that in a later chapter, which is actually attacking whilst moving backwards. It's possible to do, but you've still got that aggressive mindset. So no matter what I'm doing, I could be covering here, I could be turning, my intention is still to inflict harm. But the simple reality of a street fight is that when I'm taken by surprise, this might be my best option for now. You don't have to gut everything out and go, no, I'm gonna stand and face and just wail away. That's what idiots do. You might need to get that space. If you're in a club, you're on the dance floor, the steps up, get up the steps first, then turn around and look and be like, what the fuck's going on here? Before you get stuck back in again. You might wanna fight for higher ground, for a, for a better um, situation. You might wanna get to a, to a position where your friends or doormen can see you. Sometimes you've got to fight for space. So be intelligent. We are talking about attacking the attacker. We are talking about, generally speaking, as a generalized physical model of attacking the attacker, yes, we're moving forward or we're moving forward and around, as they will do in sports combat. When they're stalking their opponent, they'll move forward and they'll move around them. Um, but sometimes you might have to move backwards. And sometimes your whole body might have to turn away. That's just the practicality of it. Don't believe in the fantasy that as soon as anybody ever, you know, I'm stood picking a DVD, boom, and I'm just gonna turn around and go, what the hell, what? I don't fucking think so. I'm stood there looking at DVDs, gonna theme that one, ugh, I'll be like, that's ah, shit. But that's what you need to train for. You need to train for that switched off state, the state you get into in the supermarket. There's, you notice when you're switching off. Just stand there and notice when you've actually completely switched off. Okay, that's it for that section, thank you. The next level um, of, of the physicality of attacking the attacker, now that you've got an idea of what the mindset is and you need to think in terms of this more uh, thuggish way of doing things, not, not so much the martial artsy technique based way, more the aggression, adrenalized, uh, violent intent way of doing things, let's look at some basic um, principles of, of movement. You want to make these things combatively, ergonomically efficient and you want to keep within your combative priorities. Combatant priority number one, knock the guy out. This is all covered in the Beta 8 series. Number two is create fear or pain. Number three is to, is to cause injury. And number four is to either control your opponent or control the space. So if you, can't, if you can't knock him out, then create an injury. If you can't create an injury, then just cause fear or pain. If you can't cause fear or pain, then you fight for space or you fight to control your opponent. So what kinds of things would you generally be looking to do? Well, look, let's say, um, I, I, I've come up with this, this sort of a notion which I'm calling a pyramid structure, which basically is you, you need to think in terms of your hands, the top half of yourself can move, they're fast and light, even with no training, because everybody can move their hand, this is what we do all day. Not everybody can lift their leg up and you know flick somebody in the eye with their big toe. So you want to basically be thinking in terms of a heavy base, but a light top half. So your legs should pretty much stay on the floor, unless you've become involved in some kind of a clinch, which means, oh, you've dragged them up into the wall, like the crush phase, the beta eight series, where you feel stabilized, where you feel comfortable to be dropping in knees. I mean, knees really. If you wanted to take it a little bit further, I don't preach the rules of these things. This is just my suggestion to you as you're attacking somebody. There may be a straight up groin shot that just goes straight up the middle. Other than that, keep your legs on the floor. So remember that sort of that pyramid structure principle. That means that if you just put your hands up for a second, up here, you can move your hands quite quickly. You know where you want them to go, depending on where his arms go and whatever. But these things are generally quite slow and quite heavy weapons. 
by all means, if you can drag his head down, bang, give him one in the head, but use that very, very judiciously. So what are we gonna look at? Well, it depends on what range you're at. There's a limited number of things that you can do depending on the range you're at. Keep this simple. You wanna, we've already said that with the m series, you wanna make that person feel like they've unleashed a maelstrom of violence that's mainly focused around the control center, that's mainly focused around the head. A frenzy, vicious, vociferous, continual attack. Now, when martial artists hear that, the temptation will be, you go, oh, let's scatter it filled with loads of different techniques, loads of different ways of attacking, different angles and all the rest of it. Let's keep it simple. What do we know with definite that we can definitely apply with. At the simplest level, we always know that we can hit with a palm. Even if the guy is covered up, you know, there's still targets to stress him out. Don't keep walloping full force, obviously be intelligent, but palms, palms predominantly. When, there's, when you've got these uh, negative combative assumptions like there's no time, there's no space, there's bad flooring, your palms are a pretty good bet. Even if you've grabbed with one hand onto the clothes and all you can do is this, you know, you're still, you're still gonna be generating some kind of an effect. So you're predominantly palms and knees. But if the fight starts at a close range, it has to, well, I mean, I'm asking you a question. If a fight starts at a close range, you need to come up with a technique, a tool or a tactic that drops pain with the possibility of unconsciousness into that person. I choose a headbutt. I know a lot of you don't like headbutts, particularly um, the Americans are dead, dead against headbutts. It feels uninstinctive and unnatural. I think you need them because I can't think of anything else that you can do. If you're gonna bring your hand up, you've gotta come out of range to then bang and deliver with any kind of force. The only thing, you know, people talk about going for the groin. If I go for the groin when he's going for my face, you know, he will win, scissors, paper, stone. You know, groin shot is painful. Punching the jaw has a potential to knock out, which then allows him to stamp all over my head. The, the best I can hope for is bang and he'll go, ugh. You know, so against the two, the groin shot just isn't really good enough. People even talk about grabbing the groin. Some people would be like, ah, I'm totally freaked out by it. Other people, you'll just get nothing. Trust me, you know, I've hit people in that area and I've, I've been attacked in that area. And for some reason, sometimes the attack makes you want to throw up curl a ball and die, and then at other times it just doesn't seem to do anything, or it hurts, but you can carry on. So it probably comes down to what state you're in when you get hit. It's not reliable. This, bang, this big heavy part of my body, especially in my case, um, firing into his head, into the soft tissue of his face, into his jaw, I know that's gonna get a result. Worst case scenario is if we're up in here, and he's giving me verbs or whatever, and I bang him, I'm gonna generate space, that allows me to come back to the palms. So we're just looking in terms of pure combative efficiency here. That's what you've got at your shortest range. At your medium range, if you can work out, bang, to here, doof, 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 that's what you're gonna get. At longer range from that, if we're out here and it's a fight, he's gonna be moving into me. So rather than trying to work kicks and stuff, just keep with the palms, but throw a longer palm. You need to learn how to throw these things. These, this is your bread and butter. This, bang, 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 is your bread and butter. Firing up into the head, just anywhere, anywhere really on the head is a target for that. If all you're looking to do is create stress, if all you're looking to do is to stress that guy out, throw in some of these. So you're going bang, 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 and then throw some of these in. You can just hit single-sided with this. Go bang, bang, and really commit. Firing with your hips, bang, with one side. If you get stuck, if you grab hold of me and you're getting close, and you're gonna do something called mauling, which we're gonna get into in the next section, which is basically where you attack the face and move your fingers all over the face and rip into the soft tissue of the face to generate space to move back out to then start striking again and going back to your major plan. But we're gonna cover that more in the next section. So that's just to give you an idea of the principles on which your physical movement needs to be built. Remember this pyramid structure. Remember you wanna keep this heavy, so your stance in a fight Normally, you'll probably stand too high and you'll stand too straight. Generally speaking, you know, you can never really be, you'll always want to come a little bit lower. You always want to cover up a little bit more and get down low. This is that pyramid structure principle. Get that base nice and low. Get these hands moving intelligently and quickly, stressing that guy out. Looking for the knockout or to push him over and stomp. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
Okay, in this section we're going to look at um, ripping, slipping, ragging, mauling and sniping. These are just, it's just a mnemonic, it's just to help you to remember there's a combination of things that you can do. They're not so much um, physical techniques, so they manifest as physical techniques as they are principles of movement. And these are things that you need to be bringing together in a fight to get that overwhelming, frenzy, viciousness of attack. Now, um, as, I, as I nearly went into in the last section, just to say what this could become, but I don't want you to train it like this. This could become you thinking with a compliant partner, okay, I'm just gonna go through a chain of attacks. So I'm gonna think palm strike, and I'm gonna do elbow, and I'm gonna do back fist, and I'm gonna do back fist, and I'm gonna chop into his neck, and then I'm gonna headbutt, and then I'm gonna eye gap. Don't do that, don't do that, because this is not gonna fucking happen in a fight. Not if he's fighting back. If he's moving backwards because he's going fucking out now and covering, you're not going to get this and this and this. If he's fighting back and hitting me, then this and this and this suddenly becomes an awful lot less applicable. So don't fantasize that because in training his head's keeping still and I'm, he's allowing me. I mean, individually, I'm not saying any of these techniques are wrong or they're, or they're bad or they don't have an application. They do have an application. A back fist does have an application. Striking into the neck with the edge of the hand has an application. Eye gouging does, biting does, headbutting does. Of course it does, but they don't chain together like that. You can't just go, oh, it's a, you know, it's a whole buffet of different martial arts techniques, and I'm gonna combine them to create this thing. That's the temptation, avoid it. Because when the pressure is on, we're assuming now that this is a pressured situation, otherwise it's domination. If you're just dominating somebody, any fucking thing is going to work. If you're working with a compliant partner, any fucking thing is going to work. So keep this simple. Keep this simple and keep this as vociferous as you possibly can. Okay, so we'll start with um, ripping. Ripping, as I say, it's just a way of remembering things for you. Rips um, in, in uh, sport combat usually refers to cheats. That means when you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing. These are a lot of the moves that are banned in the UFC, a lot of the stuff that was covered in the cage to street. Um, things like attacking small joints, you know, say if somebody can wrap around from, I know you would never attack like that, but some, some grapplers will, if somebody attacks you like that and you couldn't get out, so you, you were attacking the back of the hand, striking them, you're attacking the small bones, you're attacking the small joints which is a rip, you may not do that in sport combat, it's called ripping. So, but usually rips have a ripping motion to them, it just happens to work that way and that's probably why they were named as such. So you're ripping into the fingers, you're ripping into the small joints. There's other, there's other small bones that you're not supposed to attack, like up and into the nose, if you just let go there. Um, attacks to the groin are considered cheats. Attacks to the eyes are considered cheats, but again, notice how these have ripping motions if you're gonna attack into the groin. If you're going to attack into the eyes, into the soft tissue of the face, you just fucking grab it and pull it. If you're going to rip into the ear, you would grab it, make a fist and pull. And that would generate an effect. That's ripping. So anything where basically, a way of remembering it is, um, if, you're in a, if you're in a grappling situation or a clinch, where you can reach through and touch something that you shouldn't be getting hold of, and then just get hold of it. It's attacking the person's weak spots. That's ripping. Slipping means moving out of people's holds and grabs with as little effort as possible. So, such that if Peter grabs me, we don't start getting involved in the jiu-jitsu game or the wrestling game or whatever else. So when you're slipping, such that if Peter grabs me, the easiest way is for me to just move so that we don't get stuck in that game. You know, when you see people grappling, when you see people in a sport combat situation wrestling with each other, what allows those techniques to work is the fact that the other person's playing the same game. If you don't play the same game, those te techniques don't work. If, if, I, if I clinch here, if me and Peter clinch together, he's lending me structure by his resistance. There are things that, we're not going to get into this today, there are things that he could do that just steal that structure. If he, by resisting me, he's giving me something to hold on to. Yeah, this feels good, now I'm in control of him because he's pulling backwards. You see what I'm saying? So. Slipping is the opposite of that. Every time you get grabbed, you could call it tactical wriggling if you like. That means every time somebody tries to grab you, you don't worry about what it looks like. You just basically just, I'm really sweaty as well. He's not, fa he's not faking that. It's, I am actually sweating. Um, it's obviously not as easy to do if, if, um, if clothes are grabbed. This is my new t-shirt, so just grab me here really gently. Um, if, if clothes are grabbed, that's not as easy to do. But again, don't make your defense um, overcomplicated and don't overreact. We don't have to go, oh, arm wrap, 
elbow break, chop in the throat. None of which is going to happen. Because as soon if you grab that again, as soon as I arm wrap and he thinks his elbow is going to break, he'll pull it out or he'll hit me. Nobody's going to go, Wee. he'll just go, look, and pull her arm out and bang you. So don't make things complicated. That's the point with slipping, is if you do, if you just grab me around the neck, you try and find something simple to do. That's just like a little, you shrug and move. Or you shrug and move and keep hitting him. Attack is the best form of defense. So slipping is not going, oh, I've been grabbed. Now what should I do? You just think, just get that off me and just keep attacking him. So to an extent, to an extent, and don't misquote me or misunderstand me here, when the attacks come, you almost ignore them. Whether it's a grabbing attack, a punching attack, or a kicking attack, your frame of reality is stronger. So you say, you want to punch me? I don't give a fuck, because I'm going to palm you. And you, even if that means eating a punch, even if that means you, 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 I'm getting hit, I've been hit plenty of times in fights doing this, bang, but it says it's paper stone again. He's caught me, and he's given me a sore head. I've smashed him in the face and taken him to the floor and then fucking bothered him everywhere. Um, your linguistics will change when you're training for this attacking the attacker mindset, obviously. So the swearing was appropriate. Um, so that's uh, what we just covered there. Rips, ripping, which is a whole field in and of itself. Cage to the street is a good source manual because basically what I did was I said, okay, there are 21 moves banned in the UFC. There was four years ago. It's changed now. There's more. Um, what are they and why are they so bad? What, what, what makes them so wrong? And these, these things are referred to by wrestlers as rips. They're cheats, they're pressure point attacks, small joint attacks, things of that nature. Slipping is getting you out of the anti-grappling mindset, the, the, the wrist lock, the arm lock, to just go and get the fuck off me and counter attack. Or just ignore it. Or just don't overreact to it. Because one of the things is, look, if I grab Peter here, he doesn't need to freak out because I've grabbed his chest there. What does he now know? He knows where my left hand is. That can't punch him now. He knows where my head is, even if his eyes are closed, because he can feel it because my hand's there. So when people grab you, don't panic and overreact. Accept it, relax, find an intelligent, aggressive response that doesn't lend too much. If you res what you resist persists. That's how it works. So when you resist that grab, that's when you're gonna get trouble. So that's ripping, slipping, ragging. Ragging's a great one. Barely any technique to this. You grab the person and you either rag them that way or you fucking rag them that way. Ragging. There you go. Simplest technique I can show you. It's what pit bulls do. When a pit bull grabs you, it's just maximum aggression, sinks his teeth into you and it rags. It pulls. It's very stressful. It's very, very stressful. If you've hit somebody and you don't know what to do with them, ragging can be a fantastic thing to do. Grabbing them around the, the, the neck, the scruff of the neck with their clothes, or grabbing here, or using rips at the same time if you're an evil fucker, and grabbing the fucking head, smashing it into things. If I grab him with full intention, trying to throw his head into the wall, even if he stops me, he's going to be getting freaked out now. Very, very aggressive. So ragging is simple. Ragging can also be used as a counter grappling thing because basically you slip, you grab the other person, and if they've got hold of you, you just rag into the technique. That's not how the grappling game is played normally by this very, very violent, aggressive, jagged edged movement. Again, something that we covered in the uh, B2A syllabus. That's ripping, slipping, ragging, mauling. Mauling generally focuses around the face and it's, it's one section of the shredder. The shredder um, by Rich Demetrius and Shido.com uh, is a, a thing, has five principles to it. And what they're actually looking to do, people overemphasize the the, the, the claw into the face, what they're actually seeking to do is to overwhelm the load of strikes and their, their all end go goal is a chest to back position. So what they're actually looking to do is to end up here whilst continuing to fucking maul into the face with rips. So there's a lot of ripping used there and they do use a lot of ragging as well, but the objective is different. So I'm taking one part of what they do, which is what, um, what I just uh, started calling mauling, which is just the attack of the face, and I only use it to generate distance. Which means that if, if I'm grabbed, and I'm in here, and I do this really, really slowly, I put my hands on his face, I find targets on his face, I gouge into them, and I continuously rip and move and rip and move and rip and move. And as I'm doing that, I'm, I'm ragging the head at the same time. It's very, very unpleasant. Um, so that's, that's mauling in a nutshell. That's, that's something that we're gonna cover um, in greater depth on a later DVD. So you've got ripping, ragging, mauling, slipping, and then finally sniping. 
I'm just showing you general principles of movement because many of you have already experienced different martial arts styles. For me to tell you that this is the best way to punch and this is the best way to palm strike um, will be irrelevant and there won't be very much that you can do with that. You can apply whatever techniques really you want as long as you apply it within the right spirit, the right attitude at the right time. Sniping is any technique that you can do where you've got distance, you've got a little bit of time and you've got a little bit of space and you can pick the person off. So that means if we come to put, if you just cover up, say for example I've hit him, hit him and we get to there and he's covered up and you know still using this pyramid structure principle, I see that there's something there that's available that I like the look of, I've got good shoes on, it's a good surface and I think I've got access to it, bang I can pop that into his leg. That's sniping, that's picking shots, that's choosing shots. So anything where you see a shot and you like a sniper, you go, you've got time, you've got a little bit of space. And when we're talking about time in a fight, we're talking about one second or a second and a half. The second and a half in a fight is enough time for your conscious brain box to go, oh, a target's there, and pick it off and hit it. Which is why I advocate the use of palms and punches, so that if, um, if Peter hits me with four palms, and we go, four, four, three, four, and I've covered, and then for that split second in a fight, he sees my jaw open, he should punch it. Bang, sniper shot knocked me out. Or if he's gone for four strikes, bang, 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 and he sees my legs open, or he, he likes another shot, bang, he goes for it. That's a sniper shot. That's more of a fair weather technique that you've earned, because you have to fight for your right to earn these shots. So you're ragging, uh, you're mauling, you're slipping, you're ripping, these are the desperation techniques, and the sniper shot, this is the maelstrom of violence that you open up on the person that opens up these, these wider sniper shots. Very, very simple things like if you just cover up for a second. Really, really simple things like going, oh, the back of his, the back of his, uh, his neck is open for something like a forearm strike or for uh, a downward elbow or seeing that his, that his, his head's open for like a big upward going palm or his groin's open or this kind of thing. Your, your, the, your striking techniques that you look to deliver big, heavy, hard shots to drop the guy out of the fight. Thank you. Okay, so the first drill I'm going to show you is um, a very, very simple pad drill, very, very combatively relevant uh, pad drill, um, one that uh, Bob Spore uses a lot, which is basically to um, choose a weapon, we'll do an elbow in this case, and then just deliver that weapon repeatedly, driving the person back in a straight line. Now, because we're looking at this concept of attacking the attacker, what I want you to drill into your neurology is this thing of, as I said in the beginning, that combative state, that violent intent, but also want it to come from an attack. So every time you design a drill, there should be an element of an attack. Now the attack can be very simple. We'll go from here, we'll probably move back to about the, where the baseball bat is there. Um, the attack can be something really, really simple, like if you just shut me in the chest with that, and then lift up to the elbow, and then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna deliver probably four shots with as much force and aggression as I can, just driving Peter straight backwards. What's my neurology drilling? If I close my eyes, you just shove me in the chest, oh, it's drilling shock and pain. Not much shock and pain, but it's better than nothing. It's, it's giving me that sense, it's putting me right off, off balance, it's putting me off, off, um, off advantage. It's putting me at a disadvantage. When you get the shove back into the wall, don't have your feet here, if you shove me here. This is markedly less painful and less distracting than if my feet are a foot away from the wall go, now I'm off balance. And that hurts more as well. So it's a good place to start the drill from. So we'll just do it slowly. So here. And what, you, what you're looking is to just generate just a little bit of that violence intent of just moving forward and chasing a target and pursuing it with that almost animalistic focus, like a pit bull going for somebody, it's only got eyes for the target. It's not thinking, whoa, what style, what fist will I strike with? It's thinking, fucking give it to me. You know, feed me, let me have it. So we'll run through it again. So nice and simple and direct. Remember this footwork thing I was talking about? Right now we're just moving straight forwards and backwards. That's fine, that's not a problem. Not every drill you're going to have is going to cover every single attribute. Sometimes you are going to have to keep it simple. We'll do one more. Okay, 
Thank you. Okay, the second uh, pad drill. Again, another, another quite simple pad drill. Um, borrowed this one from Mick Coop of uh, corecombatives.com. Um, another same start, that's where I got the start from, is from Mick's drill. And what we do is after the shove here, this represents the head. So what you do, or being charged, is you gouge into it, which would just be your thumb going into the eye, gouge into it. Wherever the pad man takes it is where he chooses to represent the head is gone. So if it's at this range for an elbow, so I'm going to fire over with some elbows as he starts to pull out and get further away. I'm just going to keep moving, striking with palms. Whatever range it's at, that's what you should go for. I think Mick normally teaches it as, um, if you push in, I think he usually teaches it to go short range, medium range, to long range. So, again, another very simple, tight little drill, but fantastic way of cultivating that switched off, switched on, uh, violent intent state. We'll just run through that now. Which is a horrible mess. That's what that fight tends to look like. Let's go again. I actually chased with my elbow then, which is a dreadful, dreadful habit. If the, if the head's gone away from you, it's a dreadful habit. You can do it. Really from here, that should be a palm strike. What I did there was I chased it and followed with my elbow. If it's there, and you can do it, do that one more time. So it's just to get you switched off, switched on, simple, simple techniques being used over and over again. Thank you. Okay, for this uh, third drill, um, it's just a simple, modified, uh, standard Thai boxing drill. Obviously, if you put the pad up for a second, if you're doing Thai boxing or boxing or whatever, you'll start with your hands up. The pads will probably up, the guy, uh, your pad man will show whatever he wants you to do and then you'll, you'll fire these different things out. In principle, really nothing wrong with that. We just need to make a few modifications that tailor it more to our um, objectives in terms of combatives. One which is, I'm going to start with my back facing my partner. If you just push with your left hand into the back of my neck, that will be my cue to go. Uh, and we'll do this with predetermined. So I'm then going to turn, I'm going to deliver four palms. One, two, three, four. Two elbows. One, two, and then two knees. That's it. So, and there. So, really, really simple. Keep the technique simple. Focus more on going from the off state into the on state. Just run through, through, through that one more time. Here. Two, one, two. Dead, dead simple, but just it's that focus of on, off state, on state, aggression and attack. Just training your neurology to go, oh fuck, and then attack, attack, attack. Sorry, I burp just because you me. <laughs> off state, really off state? I'm really off state now. <laughs> 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 nice. Good baby, getting your wing up by it. So, in terms of your fitness as well, like if you did 10 repetitions of that little drill, swapped over, fantastic really. I mean, you're delivering a lot of violence in a very, very short space of time. You're keeping it simple and you're keeping within them combative objectives. Thank you. Okay, uh, this drill is more about uh, shot placement, no pads. Um, and it's just basically to get you used to that unusual experience of human to human contact. But obviously we have to take out other combative elements like power shots and speed. So we have to go slowly, we have to go reasonably carefully. Um, but at least you are getting that bone on bone, skin on skin contact. And this is just like a dead set. You remember this from the Destructive Cycle DVD that I did? Which I actually took from Tony Blower's Range Rover drill. You've not done this before, have you? Yeah. No. Um, so basically... Um, I would just call the shots, and as you're hitting me, I'll just cover in different ways, and you try and try and get strikes in. So if I said uh, right cross, and then we go from there, and I'll cover or move, and then I'll say uh, left punch to wherever you want, bang, right elbow, 
And, and then just basically training yourself to do some recovering. Uh, left knee. Ah, guillotine. Oh. guillotine. Yeah. Set. Go and shout grappling things after the Sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I'll just punch you again if you shout the grappling. So it depends on what, on what you want to work. This, um, the, the drill uh, is, is nice for that. Obviously, it's, it's pretty much a dead set. It's pretty much the way that in other martial arts styles, um, you'll see them if you grab my wrist, they'll go, ah, oh, wrist escape, punch, punch, and then kick, and that'll be the set stopped. And then they'll do it again. Uh, wrist escape, uh, kick, and punch, punch, and kick, and then they'll stop. So with this one, there is an extra element of improvisation there. So um, if we said, uh, I know we'll, we'll keep it in terms of what we've already discussed today. So if I just said, go for four palms, bang, 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 good, two knees, uh, uh, and elbow to the head, crash into the wall, uh, that's it, knee, bang, and that's it, you're done. So just a really, really nice, simple drill. I mean, you can use this for, for anything. You can use this for your preemptive strikes and your openers. I'm amazed when I do seminars with people, I always make them do this. Uh, how many people tell me they've never done it before? Look, you know, you wanna learn how to swim. You've gotta get in the shallow end with your armbands on. Don't be arrogant, don't look at this drill and go, oh, that looks like shit, they're moving really slowly and stay compliant. Have you done it? Have you had the experience of it? So I've done seminars with people and the vast majority of them have never stood there and gone, one, two, Three, and then they wonder why when they get into a fight, they can't knock the guy out because they're going, eh. Because they've never fucking practiced. You've got to stand there and you've got to do loads of repetitions, hours and hours of multiple repetitions of going, stay back, stay back. One, stay back, stay back. Two, and getting that shot placement, all I'm doing, and this, it feels weird, but you have to get used to this feeling of striking into the chin. This is what you ought to be an expert at, hitting people. So if you want to get an expert at hitting people, what have you got to do? You've got to hit people, but in a way that's safe. And this is a great way of doing it safely. So if you call the shots for me, just say whatever you want me to hit you with. I cross. Oh, oh shit, sorry. <laughs> Not actually hit him. <laughs> sorry, mate. Yeah, I forgot the next move. Uh, <laughs> Not to have a hit. Sorry. It's a game of uh, right elbow. Uh, left knee, if that's kind of like some kind of knee. <laughs> Headbutt. Upward palm, um, head drag to the floor. Okay, so you can do this, um, you can do all that, quite, thank you, you can do all that uh, slowly, um, but one of the things that you can do that, that ends it, lends it an extra element um, when you're comfortable training with each other is if you just come into a fighting stance. Say, for example, I was going for a kick and then crashing the hands in a headbutt. Instead of just going, meh, 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 I got that violent intent. I'm not hurting him, but I'm telling my neurology, this is serious, this is a fight, and I'm conditioning myself to, dude, see, I'm pushing. There's a difference between it eh, and just hurting him, being a twat and training. I'm pushing, that, I can do that all day, it's not gonna hurt him. I can go, push these down. They're not gonna get hurt if I slap them. Push them down forcefully, but then I need to be careful here. But still drive it in with that intent to do violence. So that's a really, really nice, simple drill, and it just gives you that focus of attacking the attacker. If you wanted to go back to that traditional martial arts scene before, grab my wrist again, wrist disengage, two punches, and a kick. The equivalent for us would be go for the wrist, slip, bang, 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 and then you'd be 20 moves down the line. It's really greedy. He does one move, you do 20 moves, it's overkill. The slight, you know, uh, whatever, whatever he comes at you with, if you want, I mean, it would look ridiculous to actually train that via that traditional martial arts model. I'd love to see guys and geese doing that though, just standing there going, right, off one move, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, it would be fantastic to see. Um, but that's, that's the model, that's basically taking that, that model of reality, that model of a fight to the next level. So that's your, uh, that's your pads, that's your dead set, and uh, those are your drills for that section. Thank you. Okay. okay, the last drill that we're going to look at is where you actually up the combative pressure a little bit, you get, your, you get your helmets on, you get your pads on, and you basically look at 
these raw basic techniques, your, your, your palm strikes, your gouging, your headbutts, your elbows, your knees, not making it too complicated and obviously not hurting each other, but doing the same kinds of drills, instead of now focusing on the pad, we're focusing on the partner, we'll just run through this really, really slowly. For example, exactly the same things he did before. He could push me up back of the neck, same thing. One, two, three, four. One, two, head down, and two. Now you could dead set it like that, or we could change it up so that he actually fights back a little bit. I could put my gum shield in, and we'll both go like that. Um, let's look at the other drill that we did. If you just shove me in my chest. <clears throat> First one we did was elbows, wasn't it? So I'll just come through here. Two, three, four. Even though he's got a helmet on, I can't take the piss. I can't go, because it still hurts. But at least now, rather than, when you're drilling just with pads, if you put your hand up for a second, you've basically got your, your drilling neurology to look and go, there's the human body, there's his feet, and I'm gonna hit away at this hand which is fine, we have to do that, we have to do these things. It's just, we can't just fucking fight each other because we'd all end up with loads of injuries. But this now, if you combine it, now I can focus on the head, where the, where the head would be in a fight. I can't hit him particularly hard like I can with a pad, but I don't think hitting hard is the most important element. I think the most important element is confidence under fire, the right tools at the right time, which means things like, if you, if you shove me again, me not going, look at where, how far away his head is, and trying to fire forward with a headbutt from that range. I don't know why I did that. When I went, you know, shouldn't really headbutt like that. I don't know what the hell that was about. But it's the wrong range, it's the wrong thing to do. Or if he pushes me again and I go, oh, head kick. Uh -oh, not in these jeans, not, after, not without stretching. Do you know what I'm saying? The most important thing is confidence under fire. Drilling and drilling to the point where if he pushes me, as soon as I open my eyes, because I've done so many of these drills over the years, I don't have to think about what to hit him with. I know what's available there. I, my fucking hand, it's like there's a magnet there and his helm, this, this is made of steel, and it just wants to stick there. I know that's what's gonna get me the best bang for my buck. But you're only gonna know that by running these drills. So the actual drill we did before, what, like this, two, three, sorry, or, if, you, one of them sorry. So <laughs> if you, if you wanna get heavier with that, you can put elbow pads on. The big, the big point with this though is, is the fact that you can, you can, you with basically dead setting still, it's still a destructive cycle drill with no intent behind it. But if I do accidentally clock him when he's got no helmet on, that's quite painful with the helmet on. If it accidentally clocks an inch in, it doesn't really hurt. Uh, let's do the, the one that we replicated over here, which is we come in here, that's it. You're gouging, you're elbowing, and you're fucking harming him. Oh, that feels good. Can I do it again? Not for the camera, just because it was nice. Can I do it again? Oh. It just, it feels right. These types of drills feel right because you instinctively know that this is the right way to go about things. Pop your helmet off for a second again. And I'm, I know it sounds like I'm slagging off other martial arts and that, but I'm cruel from the point of view of like, I have a scientific view of this. I look at a training drill and I know what that will give a student after 12 months. And I'm looking at a lot of training drills and I'm totally cool. It's not, it's a cold hearted thing. It's objective. It's not because I hate people and I want to hurt them. And you know, I'm just saying that drill is going to get that result. So when you're doing drills that are like, if you throw that right punch out again, and I'm coming here and I'm doing this, uh, you know, with all the respect to the system and the instructor and everything else, when it goes off in the chippy or it goes off in a dark alley, or if it goes off, some of the lads uh, among members this, they're in war zones who've used the stuff. If it goes off at close range in a war zone and you've dropped your weapon, you won't be doing this, but you will have a chance of doing this. And firing him, gouging, ripping him, because that's just, that's how, that's what a fight looks like, that's what a fight feels like, and that's what we need to replicate, especially when you're focusing on this principle of attacking the attacker. Thank you. Remember, uh, questions are the answer. And that principle means that when you're looking to control your mental focus, when you're looking to control where your mind goes, because you can't switch your mind off, it's always learning, it's always pursuing, it's always moving, you ask a question. You've got to ask your brain a question. Keep it focused. If you feel yourself getting depressed, if you feel yourself getting worried, you've got to control that focus with questions. What can I be doing to deal with this situation? What would make me feel really confident right now? What am I certain about right now? These are good questions to be asking and it focuses your mind. In this context, we're asking, how can I safely train myself 
to respond with a aggression but intelligence in the moment and it could be at any time. It could be, a, this is a tall order. We're not training for a cage fight. We're not training for a ring fight. We're training for like, when you've got, you know, when you've got a cold and a hangover and you've got two big bags full of shopping and you've just had a, a row with your girlfriend or your wife and you don't feel very good and you people start on you in a disadvantageous situation. Under that much pressure, the techniques have to diminish. The questions are, we're asking are, how can we safely prepare for that? How can we intelligently prepare for that? So that we don't just become folks. I, didn't, I wasn't talking about thugs so that we become thugs. We want to respond with intelligence, but sometimes when a fight actually goes physical, you need to get to that thuggish mindset. It's almost a little bit thick in a way. You need to turn off the frontal lobe and just get stuck in there, and bang the person and attack the attacker. Some of the things that we're looking to do here, a few key principles. One is we're looking to pack as much violent movement and violent intent into a smaller timeline as possible. That has the effect of like a grenade going off. Instead of, if you take your violence that you're going to pour into a fight, your energy, and you spread it over 15 seconds, it will be far more dissipated than if you get it all out within the first three to four seconds. Does that make sense? I hope it does. That has an explosive effect. It's like a grenade going off. When we talk about explosivity, we're talking about packing aggression, violent movement, violent intent, really vicious, angry, nasty violence into as short a period of time as possible, applied judiciously with intelligence that's what we're talking about that's violent intent combined with explosivity two of our biggest key principles the question that you should be asking when you're actually facing an opponent is how can I switch this guy off what can I do to take him out of the fight how can I cause injury right now look at the situation look at the environment trust yourself train hard train really really hard and you need to because these kinds of drills, they drill your, you know, strength and fitness is going to be a factor. Don't think for one second that you don't need to be strong or fit to deal with a physical fight. Of course you do. You do your, you don't absolutely have to, but it would be remiss of us as self-protection practitioners to not deal with that side of our training as well. You can get away without it, but you should be drilling your strength and your fitness as well. It is going to be a factor. But you've got to ask the question, how can I cause as much injury as possible? How can I train to make myself as safe as possible and to respond with as much intelligence and aggression as I can in a violent situation? That's the Attacking the Attacker DVD tutorial. Make sure you listen to the CD that goes with this tutorial where we'll go even deeper into the psychology of the Attacking the Attacker principle. Thank you.